artificial intelligence. Enabling the full potential of this transformative technology requires more than advances in hardware architectures. Software is now one of the most critical factors of an AI solution, unlocking the power of the AI architecture so developers can bring their next generation ideas to life. Puma Abidi is a senior director of AI software, products and engineering, AI industry champion, advocate of responsible AI, and an art enthusiast. She leads a worldwide team at Intel responsible for optimizing AI software to achieve peak performance across a variety of hardware architectures. In part three of the series, Huma explains the critical role of software in AI. This is Architecture All Access. Hi, I'm Huma Abidi. This is Architecture All Access AI Software. I am so excited to be here to talk about artificial intelligence software and solutions that are used by millions of AI developers. If you haven't already watched my good friend and colleague Andres Rodriguez's video on AI fundamentals and hardware, please be sure to check it out. AI is everywhere. It has exploded in popularity in the past decade and software innovations have been a key ingredient to enabling AI to grow so rapidly. But what do we mean when we say AI software? This is a good question because there are so many components to AI software. Let's start by breaking down the different parts. You can think of software as being segmented into a software stack. The lower you go, the layer of the stack becomes more specific to what hardware the code will eventually run on. If we visualize this stack, we call the top layer the application layer. This layer is where most application developers do their day-to-day -day work. This layer is how we as programmers define what we want to do, from searching for anomalies in medical images, to predicting the path of a hurricane, to recommending what peripherals you may want to purchase, to go along with that new Intel laptop sitting in your shopping cart. For me, I like to combine my passion for engineering and art. For one of my recent projects, I used an AI optimization technique called neural style transfer. That takes two images, a content image, for example, one of my paintings, and a style reference image. That could be a style of a famous artist like Van Gogh or Monet or something completely different like an image of an Intel chip and blend them together. So the output image, as you can see, looks like the content image, but painted in the style of the reference image. This can be done in under a hundred lines of code and generating the restyle painting is nearly instantaneous thanks to the software optimizations. That leads us to our next layer, the middleware layer containing frameworks. An AI framework is a collection of building blocks and libraries that allows data scientists and machine learning engineers to create, train, validate, and deploy AI models. The models can be created using either deep learning or classical machine learning frameworks. Some popular deep learning and machine learning frameworks are TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, and XGBoost. In addition to the libraries included in the frameworks, libraries can also be standalone. These libraries simplify many types of machine learning and deep learning challenges. You might be familiar with some of these, scikit-learn, Keras, Pandas, and NumPy, just to name a few, and there are many, many more. The lowest layer of a software stack is the one that is closest to the hardware and interacts with the layer above to create optimized code for that specific architecture being targeted. This code is often written by library developers who have expertise in hardware software interaction. This is where AI specific hardware features and instructions are leveraged to accelerate AI software. Different architectures have different goals and any specific workload can be optimized to take advantage of the 
unique aspect of an architecture. Based on the use case requirement, for example, online real-time response for inference, like for language translation, which is interactive, an immediate response is needed versus offline batched inferencing. As AI has gone from niche to omnipresent, models are becoming larger and larger, with some models now surpassing trillions of parameters or weights. A single device often does not have enough compute and memory to efficiently perform all of the needed calculations. On the hardware front, this has led to architectures that can be put together in clusters and workloads split up amongst multiple devices of the architecture. The splitting of the workload is one of the key areas where innovation continues across architecture and software, looking for the best way to distribute these massive workloads across multiple devices and to keep all the devices fully utilized. On the other side of the spectrum, there are many operators and combinations that comprise a neural network. Optimizing them one by one is time consuming and not scalable. Graph compiler is one represented technique that has gained significant attention in recent years and aims to address this issue. For example, TensorFlow XLA, PyTorch Glow, MLIR, 1DNN graph, etc. And there are several other areas where software optimizations can have a huge impact on the performance of our AI model in both training and inference. Let's look at two of these areas, quantization and pruning. Quantization is where we reduce the number of bits used to represent our data and weights. For instance, we might reduce a 32-bit number to a 16-bit number, an 8-bit number, or even lower number of bits. This reduction in bits when combined with an architecture that is set up to take advantage of lower bits can result in significant increases in performance or reduction in power or both. The challenge though is to figure out how to map these values from higher number of bits to a lower number of bits and to maintain an acceptable performance or accuracy of the AI model. Pruning is another optimization for deep learning networks. In this case, not all calculations of the model hold equal weight with regard to the outcome of the model. If software can figure out which parts of the model can be removed and the model is still able to achieve acceptable results, then those calculations don't need to happen and the model can complete an inference pass that much quicker resulting in lower latency and higher performance. Several libraries exist for you to use for quantization, pruning, and other AI optimization techniques as part of your AI workflow. While making models run efficiently is very important, I want to talk about something which I am very passionate about in AI. That is also doing it in an ethical and responsible manner. Responsible AI is an area that the entire industry is rallying behind to put technology and policies in place to minimize biases. Incomplete, underrepresented, biased data sets or algorithmic biases can lead to serious repercussions and unintended consequences. Imagine a skin cancer imaging AI model that isn't trained across multiple different skin pigmentations or an AI model that rejects you from a home loan without any explanation. These are the types of challenges that must be fixed for AI to move forward and be successful. Like many others, my team and I at Intel are working on expanding our focus into integrating fairness and explainability into our AI software. If you are in the AI field or considering pursuing a career in AI, I hope that you will join my colleagues and me in making AI the best that it can be. There is a lot of exciting work ahead. Thank you for joining me today.